And my friend Sam here, this video is for Bill Sweeney. So Bill left a comment uh, asking, uh, could the wraps be a little bit longer? Uh, he says that it works okay for his family, but he's just curious if longer would be better for larger limbs. And the answer is yes. Uh, but that leads to this video and a deeper dive into many, many decisions that have gone into the wrap along the way. Um, I'm going to start with a previous version of the wrap. This was out, I think, about four years ago. And, on, you know, on this side, I had the, the tab here with some Velcro. The Velcro didn't grab as well to the material. Um, I had a safety pin on the end, too. I thought people might like that because it's a multi-use item, but... Other people were nervous about having a pin in the setting of bleeding, and so that's quite reasonable, so got rid of the safety pin. The tabs for this one were circular. Uh, some people didn't like how that grabbed. And on this end had a metal uh, slip clip, which really didn't work great. It, it, it was okay, but not great. So anyway, back to the drawing board, and that is what led to the current version. I should also say this the length of it was pretty similar to what we have now and the width as well. And I'll go into the, the decision for the width and then the length. Um, so I tried this material here about one and a quarter inches. And I also tried two inch and the two inch is a bit bulky. The one and a quarter I think would work just fine, but uh, I, wa I wanted the product to be viewed as a tourniquet in the beginning. Um, today I want it to be thought of as a multi-tool where People do direct pressure first, so a little bit different. But in any case, uh, tourniquet people love 1.5 inches and above. And I knew that 1.25 would get rejected. Even though you can wrap one next to the, the other, um, it would be rejected just for that. So today's wrap is uh, 1.6 inches. And in terms of the length, frankly, it's based on my leg. So uh, I went to a point where blood flow stopped on my leg and then added a little bit extra. And, and mind you, um, it's th there's two variables. It's the circumference of the leg, but also how strong is the rescuer. So without a lot of effort, I can stop blood flow and have a good amount of tail on my own leg. If you pull really hard, you can get, obviously, higher pressures. So I feel like for the vast majority of legs that are out there, this will do the trick especially if you go with direct pressure first and then wrap proximally to arterial occlusion. But, you know, let's go through some of the other variables. Uh, you know, what do you put on, on the label here? Application time? What about reassessment time? I mean, that could be a useful thing. Uh, and then the, the tabs themselves. Uh, so I have, there are four tabs on here. They're rectangular. Would squares be better? Would it be better to go with three or five tabs or, or zero? I mean, the product will work if it was zero, but it'll unfurl more easily and not hold on as as well without any. Um, and then on this end, you know, this, this slip sleeve is really the uh, probably the crux of the device. So I, I pull and I can get it to the smallest of limbs, and and that's really important. And and frankly. I, I can see people are viewing the product as a bleeding control device aimed more at, at kids and dogs and small limbs. So um, this is a very important part of the product. And, and if people are thinking of it for small limbs, then it, you know, it doesn't need to be longer. Um, and then there's, you know, what about the size of this slip sleeve? So I think it's three inches right now. It could be four or five or two. I, I, frankly, I'm not sure what's best, but this seems to work pretty well. I like how it looks. So that's what I went with. Um, color, you know, black. Everybody in the military loves black, but bright colors make more sense in the civilian world. That's why it's we have orange. But, it, you know, if you want something else, yellow, green, blue, I mean, there's any number of different possibilities. It, it all boils down to MOQs, minimum order quantity. So, you know, if you want a, a custom wrap and you want to buy 2,000 of them, let me know. <laughs> I will um, get you sorted out. Anyway, I, there's a lot of hair splitting in uh, building something simple. And, um, well, this is where I'm at. Oh, I forgot to even talk about it. So what about bulk? What is uh, size and weight and all of those variables that you want to optimize? My, in my opinion, I want something that is the lightest and least bulky item so that it's in people's pockets 
so that it is near bleeding when it happens. And, and this relates to cost as well and where the product gets made. So I, I tried, I've tried for five years to get these made in the US and failed miserably. I mean, the only company that has come close to saying we could make this, they, they quoted me for you know $11 each. And it's just, it's just not gonna happen. So I want the price of the product to be less than $10 so that it lands in people's pockets. I want it to be affordable so that people can buy it and people can have it near bleeding when it happens. But it's just, there's, there's a lot of hair splitting. <laughs> anyway, Bill, hopefully that's helpful.